Welcome back to the Not Just a Bikini Gold podcast. This is your host, Justin Anderson. And today, guys, I am on the iPhone just because it's snowed in and I can't get to um, the place where the podcast or the podcast equipment is. So, social media. Today, I'm going to be talking about social media, the effects that it could be having on your goals and your mental state and your overall mindset. Why? Because over the, probably the past few weeks or so, I started to see quite a few girls on Instagram say, you know, I'm going to be taking a social media break and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, I just want to kind of put my take on it. I do feel that I could give some good information here just purely because that's what I do for a job. I'm a digital marketing freelance consultant as well as pursuing all my other fitness interests and obviously this podcast. So I have hands-on experience of how difficult it can be to balance this and not let it to be honest not let it take over your life it can be a very very hard thing you know we're in the we're in the fitness industry guys you, we know that we have to kind of play the game to a certain degree we all know that we have to you know have that social media presence yeah I haven't really planned this as much but I'm just going to give my takes of the effects that social media could be having on your goals the positive impacts of social media negative impacts and hopefully you guys at the end of this podcast will get to a situation where You've got a strategy, you're in the right mindset and you basically know what you're going to be doing and have, control social media, don't let it control you. So the biggest thing that I come across, again, is seeing girls having to take social media breaks. Now why it gets to that stage, it could be you know loads of different reasons, but for me personally, when I first started doing digital marketing, I just felt completely burnt out. I constantly felt like I was having to be in the demand zone, And when you actually look at putting yourself in the demand zone, this doesn't have to be social media. This can be any sort of situation when, let me think. So when, you know, you've got to do your washing and you know that you should do your washing probably five days before X party or X event. And you leave it, you leave it, you leave it. And then the day comes and you think, oh shit, I haven't got anything to wear. You're in the demand zone. You're ha- you're in that fight or flight response, and you're having to be a bit irrational, and, and you don't feel like you're in control. So this is very very much like what social media does. It's constantly putting you in that demand zone. But the notifications keep coming up, and you feel like you constantly have to be in the ball, and you constantly have to reply back. So one thing that I would definitely say you haven't done already is go through all your social media accounts and look at what notification you really need to see on your lock screen. Let's be real. Do you really want need to see who's liking your photo when half of it is going to be full of bots anyway and people that you don't even know? I manage about, how have I forgot now? I think I manage about seven or eight Instagram accounts at the moment. Now, you can imagine if I didn't manage those notifications properly and I just left it, my lock screen would just be rammed full of stupid notifications of oh this person's like this this person's like that photo and it can get very very overwhelming I actually do enjoy when I look at my phone and I don't see a crap load of notifications from things so I depending on the account probably a lot of you will only have one or two accounts to look at so look through your notifications yes if you've got direct messages especially in a customer service role you'll probably want to keep those on comments you know you might want to reply back to comments because that's quite nice to see but do you really need to see if someone's followed you do you really need to see if someone's liked your photo? Like, you need to look at what you need to be focusing on on that account and what's it going to serve you. And you can do that on Facebook. You can do that on Twitter, Snapchat, all that sort of thing. Go through all your social media accounts after this podcast and go through your notification settings because you'll be surprised how much clearer you feel looking at your lock screen or, you know, just generally notifications and you're not having to feel bombarded and feel like, oh my, instead of dreading it, You want to look at it and actually be excited and want to be engaged in that social media channel. So that's kind of the first point. The second point is, what is social media actually serving you? This can be a very, very loaded question again, but obviously for social media, you've got loads of different avenues why people use it. You've got inspiration there. You've got connecting. I've met some really, really cool girls on Instagram and it's just hilarious how the platform works. However, that's just the positive side. The negative side It could be quite time consuming. You can be procrastinating quite a lot. And you you can look on a Saturday night, look at your Instagram and feel like dog shit at the end of it, thinking, oh my God, this person's got this, this person's got that. So you've really got to look at what is social media serving you at the moment. 
Is it a pain that you're trying to avoid? You know, we all go back to this pain and pleasure response. That's how the human mind's kind of worked. We run away from pain and we obviously go towards pleasure. So what pain are you avoiding at the moment? And what pleasure are you getting out of it? So going on social media, it's kind of like that shut off response. You don't really think about anything. You're in your own little world. But what pain are you avoiding? Are you avoiding the pain of calling that client that you need to? Are you avoiding that pain of that pain of getting up in the morning? What is social media doing for you? Is it, just be real with yourself, is it actually serving you? Is it benefiting you? Or is it something else? After that, you need to have a really look Again, and if you actually need these accounts, I remember listening to a really good po- podcast, Sports Motivation Podcast. I always plug them just because they're so... Nini Shobo is so good at what he does. And one podcast that he was hosting, he was talking about whether you actually need that social media account in itself. After I listened to this podcast, I shortly realised that Twitter, I never used it. It was just there. Like, I have it for my account. For Sorry, I have it for my clients, but... I don't need it for myself. I don't. It doesn't serve any purpose for me. It's just kind of a kill time sort of thing. So that went very, very quickly. Snapchat, again, I rarely posted on Snapchat when I had it. And when I realised, I thought, oh my God, I was using Snapchat to look at everyone else's life because I was interested in their, in their life. And then when you actually think about it, why do you need to be focusing on other people's lives? Why are you say if you put that interest... All that time that you're spending looking on people's Instagram stories or Snapchat stories, you're obviously interested in them for a certain reason. Now, if you transfer the amount of time and the amount of interest and enthusiasm you have in looking at other people's lives, if you turn that back on yourself, how much further would you be with your goals or with things that you want to do in your life? That's a big one. And that is something that I shortly realised when I had my Snapchat account. Why was I spending so much time looking at other people's lives, being interested in it? And it's not me being a dick. It's not me being selfish. But, you know, your goals aren't going to work themselves. No one's going to do it for you. And more, the more and more and more time goes on, you realise that it, life is really too short to be wasting it. So what social accounts, social media accounts do you really, really need in your life? And again, I know Phoebe Hagen did a good post on this about going through your following and actually looking at if these people that you follow actually benefit you, if they give you any value, if they inspire you, or if they actually really piss you off, make you feel like shit, or make you just not want to be on the Instagram platform at all. Like, it's not... You know, people get a bit hetter about following and all the not following me back. Like, who honestly gives a crap? Like, tonight, in a few years' time, we'll all be laughing about how petty Instagram was. So go for your accounts. Don't be afraid to unfollow that person if you need to. If you need to unfollow me, if you need to unfollow this podcast, go freaking do it. If it's not serving you, you're wasting your time. You're honestly wasting your time spending too much time and effort worrying about your Instagram ratio or looking at what this person ate for dinner and all this stuff. Like you need to start focusing more on yourself. And at the end of the day, your inability to focus is going to be the reason why you don't reach your goals. I had this very same problem when I first started start doing digital marketing because I'd be on like a client's Instagram or their Facebook and then within two seconds, lost my focus completely. I'd be looking at pugs. And don't get me wrong, I still have that time that, you know, I kind of like, I call it like indulge. So I'll go and just do a bit like, not trolling, <laughs> look and go in the explore. I look and see what people are up to. But instead of just doing it willy-nilly, like I have a system and I have certain times and days and hours and time slots that I will dedicate that time to. After that, it's gone. I don't look at it and it can just wait. And sometimes you have, you know, you, you kind of think, oh my God, like you've taken ages to apply. If it, people honestly will appreciate that you have a life. Like they're not even though if a lot of people expect you to be in that in-demand zone and always apply, trust me, once you put that barrier up and people will start to realise, oh, well, this person isn't always going to be at the end of the phone and that's away from social media. You have to do that with clients. So I have to do it for myself when I do emails and calls. People can't expect you to be at the end of the phone or the end of the line constantly. Just because we have phones doesn't mean that they should be locked down on us. So another thing that I do that I find really, really helpful is... Every single Friday morning, granted if client work isn't too hectic or, you know, fitness stuff, all all those sort of things, I will 
leave my phone in my car, obviously in the glove box, safety first, and I will go to, well, my boyfriend's mum does um, a lot of work with Parkinson's and she does a morning walk somewhere in Northampton and she does Nordic walking because Nordic walking is really, really good for people with Parkinson's and I go along and I just yeah, grab the sticks and I just go and walk with them and I enjoy the time in the park. And some, a few years ago, I would have laughed at myself doing that, but God, I come away. It's the only time of my week that I'd have... You won't you won't catch on a Friday morning, basically. If you try and message me, I always say to people, or say to clients, Friday mornings, you won't hear from me until after midday. Just give yourself that time. Like You need to start treating yourself a bit more night, like kindly and giving yourself more respect and putting yourself first. Give yourself that time. And put it, you know, instead of just leaving it until you get to that point that, oh, yeah, complete breakdown, you, it's too much, you feel burnt out. Break it up across the whole of the year or the months or the weeks. Give that, give yourself like one day or one half a morning that you just don't do anything with social media. And instead of looking at the floor, you look up and look at what's around you and enjoy it. As an example as well, if I go and see my nan, I leave my phone in the car because I rarely get to see her and I know that... I think people forget as well how rude it is, especially with the older generation. I think it's still worthwhile. I'll probably sound really old before my days being fucking 24, but people aren't going to be around forever. And you don't want to look back and think, oh my God, like that person's Instagram story was really not worth it, me not listening to what my boyfriend or my dad or my grandma had to say and what they were trying to talk to me about. So you don't have to get to the point that it's a burnout, but you need to start putting it strategies and certain time blocks in place throughout your week that you do what you need to do with social media whether that is for your business whether that's to grow your brand whether that's to connect whatever the purpose is as long as you're happy with that then roll with it but don't get into the situation that you're constantly on your phone and you're constantly holding to it and you constantly feel like you're in that demand zone break up your days and just be really strict yourself and say right like for example for me in the mornings, I'm awful at getting up in the mornings. Really, really bad. And I still am to this day. So I use social media to, just to wake myself up. So as soon as the alarm clock's on, I will start scrolling because I know that's going to get my brain fired up. But then I have another alarm, like 10 minutes later, that says stop. And instead of just ignoring it, I will literally stop and I will get up and I will get going. That is what works for me. Depending on what my day is like, I might do like a quick 10 minutes at lunchtime look at it, really go through it, and in the evening. That is something that I find really, really helps me. It could help you. So yeah, I guess the takeaway bits for this is find out what social media is serving you, find out what pain you're trying to avoid, and look at the positives and negatives, and don't be afraid to do a complete clear out of your social media. Don't be afraid to not apply to that person until you've got the proper time to do it. Don't break up, you know, when you're getting into the zone of trying to do certain work, you have to be in a certain frame of mind and you don't want to have social media and that notification popping up completely deter you from that mindset and from that that zone that you're in and having to get back into that zone. That's draining, that's exhausting. You don't want to be doing that. And and the quicker you realise that if you don't get a hold of social media and you don't get a hold of making it work for you, then you could be putting yourself in not even from like a goal standpoint, but just from a mental standpoint, putting yourself constantly in that demand zone, being procrastinated is a vicious cycle. You'll start to feel crap again. So I think I've rambled on for long enough. I didn't really plan that. You probably could tell, but I hope that's been helpful. And if you have any questions and want to email me, be accountable. What have you done after this podcast to improve the way that you handle your social media, whether that's you've deleted a social media account or whether it be you've really sourced out your notifications or you've gone through and you've started to follow maybe you've started to follow different sort of accounts or you've started to unfollow certain accounts that you've realized you've been a more aware and you've realized that they just don't serve you the way that you want them to so hit me an email tell me what you've done and yeah I'll see you guys in the next episode